Hello again. Now before I get started, I just want to update you about the MacBook issue I had where I had the, uh, the dead backlight on the screen the other day. Now I'm pleased to say that I have a brand new screen. They uh, said that the whole screen needs changing, but what surprised me the most was the fact that there was just no fuss involved. I was expecting the worst and uh, within two days I had it back. So I dropped it in one afternoon, they got the part the next day, the next day I got it back. So I can't really complain. It was minimal fuss and that surprised me. So the MacBook's back. Anyway, on with today's show, and I'm just going to show you how I finished off putting the server back together and installed the rest of the cameras. Now, so I'll just go through how I've set that up and what I plan on doing in the future. I've ripped out most of the unnecessary things from the switch, and uh, I've just got to neaten up the cables a bit. And I'm going to put the modem and, and RF stuff at the back here and the server in its rack mount case is going to be just underneath when I get it. Right, I'm going to use one of these shelves um, put in backwards behind where the LCD panel is to put uh, the modem in. The modem's going to sit just there and I've also got the RF amp. Now the RF is going to come in from the antenna, feed the RF amp which will then be split into five separate outputs. There's the five here and they will feed the five TV tuners, the little USB sticks that are going to be on the server. You can see I've made custom length little jumper cables here to go from the, the switch to the patch panel. And uh, around the back of the patch panel, they're all just, of course, connected there, tied up in a bit of a bunch. And I've just got to finish neatening that when they go up into the wall to the various places around the house. I've just swapped a couple of these around, so the power wall's now on this one. So basically this bank of ports on the switch does the normal household stuff, and this one's just temporary for the one camera that I've got at the moment, but when I get all eight of them, I'll just put the eight cameras directly into these eight ports here. Okay, so that just lives in there. That's all neat and tidy. In line with the uh, LCD panel here, so I'm not losing any extra space and I'm just going to sit the modem in there. Okay, just temporarily I've got the modem here and a Raspberry Pi which runs the um, LCDs here and also the screen down here which I've just got one of the cameras showing but there's still work to do. Right, what I'm going to do now is put another one of these wall plates in here for the cables to come out uh, because the eight cables that I'm going to run for the cameras wouldn't really fit nicely in there so I'm going to keep them separate for their purpose of being the video camera cables so I'm going to chop a hole in a wall and mount this now and start running some cables. Alright, now so far I've still only got the one camera because I'm still waiting for the others to arrive. I've got another seven coming. But what I'm going to do is run this cable to the existing camera that I've got, the one I put in the other day. So I'm going to take that out, run this cable so everything's uniform and I'm just, you won't see it because it's night time, I'll just do it. I'll tape this to the snake here and just feed it up through the hole and then bring that down as the first cable of eight to come down to the switch. Alright, I've got the first cable run. So these are the eight ports where the eight cameras are going to be and they're all going to have this white cable that came with the cameras. Computer case, we have computer case type stuff. <coughs> right, so I'm going to shut down the, the server that's been running just sitting up here and uh, put it in here. Okay, I've mostly finished setting up the computer here, but halfway through doing that, another four of the uh, cameras arrived. So I'm going to jump between projects, put that on hold for a minute while I uh, just get these up and running, just because I can't wait. Right, this is what's going in. The two hard drives are mounted in there. Um, and the operating system is just kind of sitting in there because it's a bit small and I don't have a bracket. And I've added the, the network card and the USB card. So I've got some extra ports on the back there. So inside the rack, you can see it fits nicely. 
underneath the other stuff that I have there. So I'll just plug that in and tidy the cables up. Okay, the last of my cameras have arrived, so I'll just uh, rip into them, set them up, and then I'll have eight. Okay, I've got lots of network cables here, as you can see, but I, I don't like having messy cables, so I've got a, a one unit blanking panel, and I've just put uh, three holes in them, put these little glands through there, and that's gonna go up there to pass the cables through, just to make it nice and neat. Right, having a look at the back of the rack first, we'll start with the cables that come out of the wall. So I've got the original uh, Cat5 here that I already had run to various places around the house. And now, as you saw, I just put a hole in the wall for the next bunch, which is these eight for the cameras. So they all go neatly up there. That's why I like to have a little bit of extra on these so you can pull the rack out and do stuff. Now the black cable is simply coax from the TV antenna. And that feeds the RF amp here. Okay, and then it gets split. You can probably just see the splitter at the front, maybe not. And then that feeds these five TV cards, which go into the USB card here. Okay, so it leaves my ports on the motherboard free. Uh, these two here are the two network devices, one for the main network and one for video, basically. So the video one that goes all the time doesn't swamp the main network one. And the rest is just modem and Raspberry Pi and a switch. The extra single Cat5 at the back here is just what goes to the computer here on the workbench. That's all. So that's why it's separate to the rest. Right now it's back in position. Uh, those cables, as I said, go around nicely. They come down here, go up there, feed in through these three holes that I put in a single rack unit here. So they can come out the front nice and neatly here. And I've, I've made the little patch leads here to length just because I'm pedantic like that. So they all fit perfectly between the switch and the patch panel. The, uh, the first couple are from the server. And the reason I've put them at the start instead of right at the end of the switch, like the other things, is because the first one has all the video um, traffic. So on the graphs for the uh, monitoring system, it's always a, a certain amount. So it makes the graphs look neater if that's just on port one, and then the rest can vary. So at the top end, I've just got, you know, the phone line going to the modem, eth yellow Ethernet one from the modem, and I said just a couple of things here, the uh, Raspberry Pi that's in this rack and the, the, the computer on the workbench over there. All right, I've just started the switch. Now I'll just uh, boot up the computer. Okay, that was the physical setup. So that's all the components and the wiring and that sort of thing, the stuff that you can touch. Now I'm gonna show the logical side of things and how I've set it up. Now, first of all, I'll have a look here at the monitoring system for the uh, server there. Now, this is the first bridge adapter. And what you can see here on the green is the traffic coming into the computer and this purpley color is outgoing. So you can see that I had just under 60 meg, forget these little spikes, 60 meg roughly coming in, and that's just from the cameras themselves. All the footage from the eight cameras adds up to about 60 meg a second. So that's constantly coming in to the network interface. Now going out from, from the servers is a lot more. That's because I'm using VLC to get that RTSP stream from, that's coming into the computer and uh, rewrapping that as multicast and then sending it out as multicast. So that same data that's coming in is going out again, but as multicast. And the rest is made up from the TV servers, which is just over 100 meg, I think, all, all of them combined. So the TV servers and the camera outgoing is about 160 meg. So on the network interface of the server, it's been hit with 60 meg in and what is it? 170 odd out. Okay, so that's a lot of use before I do anything just with normal computing. Okay, so what I wanted to do, as you saw, is get a second network interface. So I can offload all this video stuff onto its own network card and leave the, the other network card for normal computing. Okay, so you can see if I just go through here, 
This big gap here is when I shut it down so I could do the, the physical cable tightening up. So that's how long that took me, about an hour. And, and then I turned it back on and it was going. Now at this point here, I changed the server's multicast route. What I did was add a route like this. So this covers the multicast addresses. And this is the new bridge adapter that I made with that uh, new NIC that I put in. Okay, so as of that point here, all that uh, video traffic stopped, okay, on that interface. Now, if I show you the other interface, that's when it started. So this, this network card here is on its own VLAN, what I'm calling the video VLAN, which has the cameras on it. And it also pumps out the multicast from the server, which is the cameras and the TV server. So now when I open my um, VLC, I've just got a, uh, a SAP server set up and I've made a video on, on how to set up SAP announcements as well. So I can just uh, toggle through them like normal TV channels like I had with the TV server, which I've still got. So when I get to the end of this, it'll just go onto TV and there it is. Okay, and, and so on. So I wanted the video from the cameras to be multicast. And the reason is I can do whatever I want with it then and replicate it as many times as I want through the switch. Okay, so that's how the video is coming in. When I run the VLC uh, streaming command to convert it to multicast, I do a video copy because it's already compressed and I don't want to uh, stress the server by recompressing it unnecessarily. But I do transcode the audio into AAC because the format that it, that it has on there is a bit funny. So I just make it AAC and it's already um, H.264. So it makes it a nice format. So now that it's pumping out that multicast, I want to save that to the disk. And this is what I use. I just use FFmpeg, of course and I just put it in a little, little loop. So mainly the command is ffmpeg and receive the stream. That's the one that I'm streaming out from VLC. Um, I can do an audio and video codec copy now because I've already transcoded the audio using VLC. And what this does here is it separates the files into one minute segments. And I've done that because it makes good sense. Now, I've pretty much just copied the idea of the dash cams right down to the actual format. So if I go through this here, I save them to cameras, me, me hard drive, uh, swan, that's what they are, let's say front door, and just that format there with front door. So now if I go mount cameras, swan, front door, show you what's there. There's all these files that are one minute long, okay? Now, this format here is the same format as uh, the dash cam format from the cars just because I was used to it and it makes sense. It's got the, the date and the time and then what the uh, video footage is from. Now, the reason I've put it in a loop is just in case something happens to the stream, if I kill it, I pull a uh, camera out for some reason, plug it back in. As soon as the stream starts up again, it'll just continue on. So that's just to make sure it keeps running if, if there's been an interruption. But it would only be if I've manually done something anyway. All right, so I've got all these one minute files on there, but let's say something's happened over a five minute period and I want to join five of those files together. That's easy to do with um, FFmpeg as well. You can just cap them together and make one output file and there's no glitches or anything, so that's fine. Similar to how I do it with the dash cam actually. Okay, so let's say I want to join some files together. Let's say, I don't know, all the ones from 9.30 to 9.39. Um, I'll just make a directory. I wouldn't normally do it this way, but just to show you. And uh, I'd copy the ones, 093, up to 093. Okay, so they're in the temp directory now. Now I have a script. Cat video, it's not a cat video, it concatenates the video, hence cat video. Okay, all I do list the mp4s in the directory and, and make a file to join list, put it in the right format, which puts the word file at the front, and then run it. So if I do, uh, if I just run cat video there, that's it. So now I have this output, which is of course as big as all of them combined, and there you go, they're all joined up nicely. I don't think I'm going to use the program motion, but we'll see. I'll um, possibly check how these cameras actually report that there's motion because in their syslogs they, they show when there's motion obviously it can report motion so I'll just look into the network traffic and see if I can figure that out and just use that somewhere on, on the uh, server. 
All right, so that's how I've got it set up. At the moment, they're installed, they're running multi-cars the way I like it, without the um, swan box, which I found out they don't anticipate these things being used without that swan box. I didn't realize that, but um, I'd had no intention of using that anyway. But I, mean, I think it makes it a bit funny for their firmware updates. They don't really support these cameras by themselves, even though there's an option there to upload firmware. So I think that's a bit disappointing. But anyway, I'll use them. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna tweak this up a bit and, and work on it and make a nice recording system. And that's the beauty of doing this sort of thing yourself rather than just buying stuff. Because I know a lot of commenters say, why don't you just buy this? Well, there's no fun in that, okay? When I do this, I'll be able to do it my way, how I want. And that's what I like to do. It's all about tinkering around, you see? So there it is, the finished uh, rack mounted computer and camera install is done with a multicast server for them and all recording nicely. If you have any cool ideas for this, let me know and I'll be keen to maybe try them out. Uh, meanwhile, I'll be coming up with some of my own ideas as well. And if you have any questions on anything, just, just ask and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them. Till next time.